Hey, what's going on guys? Flickify here, back again with episode number 11 of my career in with Chelsea. We're going to start the episode off today with a match against Swansea City in the Barclays Premier League. So definitely a difficult opponent Swansea is because they do pass the ball around quite a bit and it is definitely difficult to break them down and score goals on them even though that they're not necessarily the best in the league points wise they are still a difficult opponent to come up against just due to their play style but of course we do have Romelu Lukaku and Samuel Eto up front so hopefully they can make an impact on the game but they have signed Begovic from I believe Stoke City he plays for and uh, he is a pretty strong keeper. I did sign him in my Aston Villa crew mode, I believe, or my Southampton, one of the two. And he was definitely a very good keeper. But here, Sammy Eto is going to do a couple of fake shots, drags this one back, gets away from the defender, and he is just going to curl that one right around Begovic to give us the fifth-minute goal. And that gave us the 1-0 lead. So definitely a strong start from Eto, showing why he earned his spot in the starting 11 for this match. But De Guzman's going to play over the top to Dyer. Dyer is going to have a go, and that is quite a miss. He really Really should have done better with that opportunity. He should have really just curled into the far post. But here, Boney's going to get an opportunity. He's going to send in the cross. Check makes a good save, though, and we go on the counter attack. But in the 33rd minute, it's going to be Fabio Contrao on the outside. Does a couple of ball rolls, plays it through to Eto. Eto with a two on three, really. And he's going to send the cross, looking for Lukaku. Lukaku is able to get his head on it, and that might just be the first goal that he's managed to score for us. I'm not sure if he scored in the last episode or not, but nonetheless, it was still a good goal from Lukaku. Just on target and clinical finishing there. A dangerous cross, but it goes through to Dyer. Dyer plays it back to Britain. Britain's going to look for the man on the outside. It's Angel Rangel, and he's going to find Britain yet again. Britain sends in the cross, and Wilf Boney trying to get ahead on it, but we do save it, and we clear this one out of there through David Luiz and go on the counterattack. Actually, Sammy Eto is going to be able to find Sherlock on the outside. Does well to get away from the defenders here. Sees the man on the other side, but he decides to go for the shot and said that Begovic does make the good save to keep the game at 2-0 for Swansea, keeping them still in the match going into halftime. But in the 70th minute, we get an opportunity to clear this one out, and what a through ball that was. It was more just of a clearance, but it actually was a great through ball to Benzia. He does a great move to get away from the defender. Now he just has to finish it, but unfortunately, that one goes over the crossbar, and it might have been slightly wide as well. Benzia just has to work on his finishing, and I think that will come in time. He's still a very young player. But here's Shelby. Is he going to get away from the defender? He's going to find Davies on the outside. Davies sends in the cross. Boney has it on target, and here just a complete mess. And it's one of those times where you have no control over what happens, and it was actually an own goal on Aspilicueta. But it did make it different on the result. A 2-1 to -one win still gets us the three points. And Czech tells me that he wants to leave the club, so that's a big blow to the team. He's an 86-rated keeper, and he's our first team keepers so that's gonna be interesting I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet uh, we do have Courtois out on loan and the January transfer window is coming up so we're gonna see what we do here in the next couple of episodes but before that, we're still going to be giving Czech his playtime just because he's such a strong keeper. And even though he's leaving the club, I still want to give him playtime. That way clubs can see he's a strong player and we can get his full value back and maybe bring in another player instead. And it was a difficult match that we had against Liverpool. They've got a lot of strong players. No Suarez, surprisingly, because I believe he always goes on the, on the transfer to Real Madrid. Um, that's what he seems like he always goes to, either them or Barcelona, some team in La Liga. But Lucas Lev is going to start things off. He's going to find Luis Alberto. Luis Alberto getting away from the defender, plays it through to Allen. Check makes a good save, though, and a good follow-up save to dive on the ball and keep them from scoring on the rebound. But Van Ginkel is going to look for Weiser. It was stolen by Coutinho. Coutinho finds Sturge. Sturge finds Luis Alberto. He finds Coutinho. Coutinho is going to use some of his dribbling, which he does have. Sends in the cross, but it is cleared out by Lampard, and we go on the counter attack right here. Here. It's going to be Muriel. Muriel is able to find Lukaku. Lukaku sees Shakiri away from the defenders. And here, there's a good opportunity to cross this one in. He does so. And it's going to be Luis Muriel picking up the first goal in the match with the header in the 13th minute. And again, time after time, I say it. Luis Muriel is so strong in the air. And he just seems to always be in the right place at the right time. They're more just tapping goals. And they're really not too contested. But that's really all you need. There, a couple of fails to clear the ball out. And it's going to fall to Joe. 
Joe Allen. And it's going to be Vidal who gets an opportunity. He has a go. That one hits the top of the crossbar. Luckily, we're able to clear this one out of the box. And we really lucked out on that one, guys. Uh, but here, we're going to continue on. Danny Sturridge manages to win that header. Luis Alberto gets the ball. He's going to have a go. And this one hits the top of the crossbar again. And Liverpool were just storming us with chances. But we just kept getting lucky. And the ball kept hitting the crossbar. And we managed to still have the 1-0 lead in here. Lukaku's going to get away from the defender, doing what he does so well. And he's going to look for the cross here. It's going to be Luis Muriel yet again. This time he doesn't win the header. He was just trying to dive in there and get ahead on it. But they go on the counterattack right back at us. It's going to be Daniel Sturridge. Find Luis Alberto on the outside. It's going to be Allen here. Gets the ball taken away by Salah. We're going to go with one more counterattack. It's Lampard. Finds Muriel. Muriel is away from the defense. He's going to have a go. And that one is saved by Mignolet. And the ball is finally cleared out. But here, Luis Muriel gets an opportunity in the 41st minute. Gets taken out. And it's going to be a penalty for us. Looked like a very controversial call. I mean, it could have gone either way. Uh, it seemed like Muriel was falling as he was shooting. So it was definitely due to the defender. But I've seen plenty of times where that is definitely not called as a penalty. But if, as we can see from the replay, it looks like he did not get any of the ball. I believe it was Daniel Agger. And we're going to have... I believe Frank Lampard eventually go ahead and take this one because he does have the best penalty stats on the team. Originally with Shakiri, but as I look at it, it's going to be either Luis Muriel or Frank Lampard. There he is. And he's going to go ahead and step up to take the kick with his right foot. And he's going to go ahead and put that one to the right. Keeper goes to his right. And we managed to get the 2-0 lead. And that is a great lead going into halftime, especially against Liverpool. A very strong team, and you definitely need as many goals as you can against them. But immediately in the second half, they do a variation on the kickoff glitch. And they find Daniel Sturridge, who's going to finish that one. Just a nice bit of passing and a great over-the-top through ball right there to cut the deficit in half for them. And Daniel Sturridge, just a very calm finish and very calm celebration, to be completely honest. But we're going to continue on in the 57. Second minute now, it's going to be Lukaku who manages to bring that one down, gets away from all those defenders, has a go on goal, but Mignolet makes another good save, but we do get a corner kick off of it, and on the corner kick, we're going to send it in, and look at that, it's going to be Varane who manages to make it 3-1 to one for us, and that is a very strong lead for us now, a cushion for us to play defensively and that's how the match did and a 3-1 win for us against Liverpool and I was very happy with that result despite the stats it looked like Liverpool had the advantage but we really uh, took advantage of all our opportunities and managed to come out with the very strong victory but we have one final match in this episode against Southampton away from home at Moulton Road and Southampton still a strong team I mean, I don't think they have Ricky Lambert up front. I believe they did sign Diof, and as you can see from the league table, we're still at the top with 47 points, five points ahead of our competitor, Manchester United. And there's their starting 11, Diof up front, Gaston Ramirez right behind, Rodriguez on the left, Davis on the right. And I didn't see Lalana anywhere in there, which is kind of surprising because he is one of their strongest players. Uh, but I didn't change much from our starting 11, Muriel and uh, Lukaku up front. Here, Sherlock is going to be able to find Oscar on the center of the pitch. He's going to play it over the top to Muriel. A great job to get the ball away from the defenders. Muriel's going to have a go, and he's going to finish that every time into the far post in the third minute. So that's how you start matches off. And I've really been trying out that far post finish, and it's been working well for me. Uh, you know, FIFA 13 or FIFA 12 near post was the way to go with things. But in FIFA 14, it's going to be the far post every time. There, unfortunately, I think it was Gaston Ramirez who managed to tie things up in the 10th minute. So it was uh, looking to be a very high-scoring game early on. But immediately on the kickoff, we're going to find Oscar. Oscar's going to play it over the top. Look who he finds, Lukaku. Gets away from the defender, and he's going to smash that with a strong finish. What a great finish that was. A lot of power behind that one to give us the lead back with a 2-1 lead. Southampton coming right back in the 17th minute, though. It's going to be Klein. He's going to find Rodriguez. Rodriguez is going to send the cross. DF has a go. That one is cleared out by our defense, and we managed to go on the counterattack right here. It's going to be Muriel. Muriel plays it to Hazard. Hazard getting away from the defenders. Here it's a one-on-three, basically. But he's going to get away. Has a go on goal. Unfortunately, though, that one was just why the target had that gone in. It would have been a very nice goal indeed. In the 64th minute, though, we get another opportunity. It's Varane 
Ryan getting his second header goal off the corner kick in this episode. Got one in the last match and gets one again, and he is just so strong in the air, and I'm really liking how much of a player he is for us. Here, Dioff gets taken out, and it is actually called as a penalty in the 75th minute, so it looked like Southampton still had a chance in this game to level it up or even get the win and this is going to be a great opportunity for them to cut the deficit back to one and if, if it's Ricky Lambert who actually goes on and takes the kick he gets subbed on for your D off right away just to take the penalty and he manages to put it right down the center and in to cut the little deficit back to one. Here on the goal kick, though, it's going to be Southampton again. Lalana getting subbed on. He gets it to Ricky Lambert. Lambert finds Lalana, and Lalana's going to finish it, making it three all. And I couldn't believe I had conceded twice within a matter of 10 minutes. And that's just how it goes sometimes. It's difficult to defend against legendary difficulty. And that's how it went in this match. So we draw Southampton 3-3. Three three, looking for the win. But unfortunately we get the draw. But not too bad regardless. And if you guys did enjoy the episode today. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. And other than that guys. This has been Blakeify. I'll be talking to you all again soon.